Hey, recording is rolling. Welcome to Monday, January 9th. Oh, here's uh, how you guys did on the midterm. So if your name is up here, then you did really good. Uh, it's awesome. If you, got, if you got a bust, you did really, really good. Even more awesome. All right, so uh, if you uh, did not take the midterm, uh, I, I think uh, a couple guys in here uh, missed it, then you can take it uh, after school in the media center uh, this week. So Monday through Thursday this week, after school, media center, uh, uh, any of your midterm breakups. Um, I uh, um, submitted a, a midterm for every student at this one there. So it should, uh, should be there for you guys ready to go. All right. And then, uh, oh, 10th graders tomorrow, and also 9th graders for that matter. But there might be a few 10th graders in here. Oh, uh, there's testing going on for all 9th and 10th graders tomorrow morning for the first few classes. So there are relocation schedules and whatnot. I posted all that information to Google Classroom. Uh, so I think there's a handful of 10th graders in here. If you're in 10th grade, then check Google Classroom and see where you're supposed to go uh, tomorrow, right? All right, so, uh, so far? All right, so we are starting harmonic motion. Uh, and what we're gonna do with harmonic motion in the ways. Uh, now, this isn't on your desk yet, but sometime in class today, I'll hand you guys this. This is a um, a page from, uh, well, Tom Turner's book. So your book textbook is chapters 14 and 15. I'll give that to you guys. I also posted a bunch of resources to Google Classroom already. Those are there. Okay. So uh, eventually, uh, these are the problems that uh, we're going to go over the uh, next couple of weeks. And we're going to pick up from you guys uh, for, uh, for homework puzzles, right? So... So I'll post to Google Classroom. That's there for you guys. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll just like what we've been doing all year. So uh, I'll uh, go through this with you guys. Make sure you guys have got that. Okay. Great. Uh, but we're going to uh, kickstart this with, uh, with the lab. Right, so I've got harmonic motion uh, involving a pendulum. Pendulum going on here. Okay. Right, so you guys got uh, this lab page in front of you guys. This lab page. Okay. Oh, uh, something about this paper I do want to point out is that it's double-sided. On the back is a different lab that we're going to save for a different day. Right, so uh, hold up this page for a few days. Uh, also, we're technically still in first semester for a few days. Uh, but, uh, so I'm not going to put any new grades in the grade book until the end of this week, uh, including this one. So this one's going to show up in the grade book uh, probably at the end of this week. That's what I'm thinking. Right, so uh, we've got to figure out for this potential of swing back and forth. Right? Uh, you guys have some materials like that. You guys got a ring stand, some strings, some weights, uh, some di different measuring tools. Right? And so uh, what's like some equation that's kind of going to govern the motion of this potential of swing back and forth? Right? What, what's like an equation? Right? Now, I can think of maybe four uh, variables that might be relevant. Actually, uh, maybe a fifth one, too. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention gravity field earlier, but we can't really uh, test for that because we're all stuck in the same gravity field. But we can uh, uh, change uh, any of these four, right, and see how, how they relate to each other. Now, you guys have known from past labs in this class, if we have a bunch of variables that we're trying to juggle, in this case, four variables, uh, ideally, you want to just change one at a time, right, and see how does that affect one other variable. So could you call it independent variable, independent variable? And then with the other two, wouldn't you leave those controlled? Right? which is exactly how we're going to go about this one. Oh, uh, don't, don't worry about the safety classroom thing. That's just for my AP class kid. Right? So don't worry about the AP thing. Right? Right. So maybe we, if we just do two at a time. And the way I'm going to take you guys through this lab is we're going to treat the time period as the dependent variable. So if you change out one of these three, how does that affect? How much time does it take to... Uh, oh, well, what do you guys think time period refers to? Capital T. Do you guys think it's the time to go from here to here? Or you think it's time from here back and forth to where it originally started? Yeah, back to where it started. There you go. Right. So from here to here, right? Back to where it started. However much time that is, that's one time period. Right? Uh, capital T. Uh, you may have seen on the past for to represent tension, but usually I try to do F sub T for tension force and try to save capital T for time period. So next couple of weeks, whenever you see capital T, uh, I try to reserve that for time period. Uh, so we're going to have to break this down into three experiments. And uh, I've got you guys sorted by, um, there should be a card on your desk. You guys see a playing card on your desk? All right, you have one of these three suits. Okay. So let's go through these one by one. Right. If you uh, have a heart on your desk, a couple of you guys have uh, hearts on your desk. 
uh, I want you guys to test out what's the relationship between mass and time period. Now, if you test, test these two, what are you doing with length and uh, and the starting angle? Same. Yeah, same. Yeah, they're the same all the way down, right? Uh, so the, the, these two would be controlled, right? Right. So you're not changing length, you're not changing the, uh, the angle. This is if you have the hearts on your desk, right? But what you will do is change out the mass. So maybe at some point you have this little 100 gram guy, and then sometime later you have like like 1,000 grams, right? So something like that, right? So you're changing that, right? Uh, let's do some hypothesizing. Uh, I can think of three basic hypotheses that ways this could go. So as you increase the mass, here's your three possibilities. One is that maybe it slows the system down, takes more time to swing back and forth. Another possibility is maybe it decreases the time intervals, goes really fast, speeds it up. Okay? And a third possibility is, well, maybe there's no relationship. Maybe if you increase the mass, it takes the same time regardless. Okay? Let me see a show of hands. What are you guys are thinking? How many guys think if you increase this mass, it's going to increase the time interval. That's say it slows it down. Who thinks it's going to slow it down? Okay. Who thinks that if you increase this mass, it's going to speed it up? It's going to decrease the time period. Oh, so that's got some votes. Okay. Who thinks if you increase this mass, the time period is going to stay the same? Oh, or that one's got some votes too. Ooh. All right. So it looks like those last two possibilities are both popular. About 50 50 split. Right. All right. Well, you guys are going to find out. All right. We'll figure out. Okay. All right, so that's one of three experiments. Now, if you have that one, you're just going to focus on that particular experiment, and we'll bring this all together as a class by, uh, you know, in class today and tomorrow. It's going to spill over to tomorrow a little bit. Okay. Right. Uh, if you have a diamond on your desk, so if you guys have a diamond card, then uh, you, you're going to leave mass the same, so that'll be controlled, and the length is also controlled. But what you'll be doing is you're changing out the starting angle. Uh, now, notice this is the angle relative to the vertical. So if it's just hanging there at rest from the vertical, that would be zero degrees from, from the vertical. Right? The more you pull it back from that. Okay. So you guys remember how to use this protractor? Okay. I'm gonna put the node right here. Are you guys are you gonna hold it like this? If you hold it like this, you you're making it harder for yourself because you're giving the extra calculation of you have to subtract 90 degrees. Eh, you don't really want to do that. You really want to hold it like this, right? Where you've zeroed out this vertical line, right? See how it's zeroed this out? And well, let's see exactly what my picture says. My picture is going to like 34 degrees right there. So it's a 34 degree angle, like that. And that would be an independent variable. So you could go 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees. You guys can change out the starting angle. Okay. The variable follows the same. Okay. Now let's do basically the same three hypotheses. What, what does that do to the time period? How many guys think that as you increase this angle, it's going to take more time to swing back and forth? Who says that? More time. Okay. Slow it down. All right, so let's have some votes. Who thinks if you increase this angle, it actually takes less time, they'll swing back and forth faster? Who thinks that? And who says no relationship? As you increase this angle, it's going to take the same time. Ooh, that's got some votes too. Got some votes too? Oh, okay. All right. And then um, the third experiment. All right. If you have a spade on your desk, uh, you, guys, you guys see if you've got a spade card on your desk, uh, then I want you to test what happens if you change the length. Now, of course, if you change the length, you're keeping the mass and the angle controlled. Those will be the same over and over. Okay. All right. So let's use the same three basic hypotheses. How many of you think if you make the length longer, 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 it's going to take more time to swing back and forth. Who says that? More time with a longer length. Okay, so some of you guys say that. Who thinks if you make a longer pendulum, it'll take less time to swing back and forth? Who says that? And does anybody say longer pendulum, same time? Anybody say that? Like that? has got some votes too. All right, so we're seeing uh, different votes on different hypotheses for each of these three experiments. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's look at this uh, uh, page I gave you guys, print it out. So you guys got a table and some spaces for some graphs. Okay. So I, I think uh, by the end of today, um, you should have all your data. And also the last 10 minutes of class, last 10 minutes of class, we're going to come together and put together some of these graphs. We're going to save a little bit of this lab for tomorrow, including, uh, including the uh, conclusion. Okay. Right. Now, even though everybody has the same table, you guys know you're doing a little bit different things with the table because you're in one of these three different experimental groups. Okay. So you guys see mass, angle, and length. Okay. Now, depending on which group you're in, Two of those are controlled, and one of those you're treating as an independent variable. But it depends which suit you have on your desk. Right? You guys got that? Now, uh, time period you're treating as the dependent variable. So we're linking everything to time period. And again, uh, tomorrow we're going to pull this all together into one master equation. Okay? But I actually gave you guys two different time period uh, columns. One says time sub 10, one says time sub 1. Okay? This is something that we've done before in this class. You guys know one of the biggest experimental errors is getting the time period exactly like when to start stop stopwatch. Oh, you guys brought your stopwatch today, right? You guys got yourself on stopwatches, right? So starting and stopping it. Uh, but what if you do this? What if you let it go back and forth 10 times? So zoom a little bit. What if you let it go 
As soon as you let it go, we go zero, one, two, three, four. Right? And when it gets up to 10, then I'll stop the stopwatch. Right? You know, you're starting at zero, right? Okay. Get up to 10, stop the stopwatch. Okay. And then suppose it comes out to like 27 seconds, 27 seconds, to swing back and forth 10 times. Okay. How much time would that be for one swing? Yeah, 2.7. You just very simply divide by 10, right? Okay. But the advantage of doing it that way is that the experimental error involved with starting and stopping stopwatch also gets divided by 10. Right? So it's a lot more accurate. Okay. Okay. And then um, okay, there's a blank column that we'll probably save for tomorrow, too. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. I think I got you guys uh, started. Uh, so, but got any questions? Any questions about anything? Okay. So go ahead, uh, do your thing. I'll walk around, help you guys out, make sure you guys are on the right track. Uh, last minute of the class today, I'll have you guys volunteer some numbers and we'll start putting graphs together. And also, I'm going to give you guys uh, this page, which we'll worry about uh, in, the, well, in the coming week. All right.